Hey guys, so today I'm going to have an honest talk about why I have not disclosed some of the things I know. And I tried to do so in a documentary, but it, it mentioned certain people and it didn't work. The other reason is there are some people who are very good at getting other people banned, but have behaved very poorly in the past. Uh, one person got Travis Wu, uh, Emma got Travis Wu and team and team, but anyone in that Facebook group, an entire Facebook group of people got banned and Travis Wu got his pro tour just like what Owen had happened. He was removed. So Emma is kind of a dangerous figure in all this because she is very apt to take screenshots of what you do. But one can also reverse it. So back in a long time ago when Emma was known under a different name, Emma was writing for Pojo. And in particular, one of her Yu-Gi-Oh! articles, which since has been deleted, but I have a copy of it, was not very player friendly. Uh, it reminds me of Andrew Yanyuk. Uh, Andrew Yanyuk owns a hundred million dollar esports team. Uh, he is a very famous Hearthstone player, and Magic the Gathering invited him back, and he said, "Nope, no, thank you." He wrote a angry rant, burning every single bridge to the ground, and Magic the Gathering still wanted to pay him money to, which he accepted initially. But looks like he is less interested in magic now and more interested in Hearthstone still. Uh, the same type of letter exists for Emma. I think anyone who has written about magic on a public forum has at one time said something very berating of magic. It's just very natural. Uh, MTG Mayfer, for instance, he, she got in trouble because he, she... Uh, said some very bad things on her, her, his Twitter post. You know, and people screenshotted that and and told Wizard of the Coast, and that was the end of that. So, there, so the reason that I'm not banned is I just have so much dirt, and they realize that all the dirt, all these skeletons, I I have come to realize I want to play MTG Arena, but the only way I can do so, the way I want to do so, which is spend thousands of dollars and dump thousands of dollars on an account, I have an NP5 J Alter in Freight, Freight Grand Order. I don't even play that game that often. If you play that game, or if you can Google it, you will understand that is not a cheap unit. Uh, a fully grail 10-10-10 NP5 J Alter. And the most expensive gacha game in, in existence. Uh, I would I would say she is probably the best character. She's the best character for me. And Fate Grand Order is the least likely percentage wise for you to get characters that you want. And for you to get five in a row. Or five not in a row because that's not what happened. I don't mind dumping money into MTT Arena. But my safety mechanism is man do I know lots of dirt and man do I have lots of screenshots because before they became famous personalities like Emma and Frank and they were doing some really bad stuff and yes you can delete your old tweets and yes if you know MTG Mayfer had deleted it maybe she would still be in a mythic invitational but I have got really good at screenshotting because I realized to survive I need to screenshot worse things than I'm saying if you understand what I'm trying to say so basically, I know a lot of bad things about a lot of pro Magic players. LSV included, Gabby Sparts, lots and lots of really bad things. And I'm holding back because as kind of like a protection. Because Gabby got lots of people banned, right? She got Travis Wu and friends banned. The combination of Gabby and Emma... Got lots of people banned. Got a whole entire Facebook group banned. Whether or not you commented on a post. So I'm like, hmm, that's not great. And then hold it to Zach Jesse thing. They got Zach Jesse banned in his online account. But even on Sleeve Media, the quarterling got banned from Christine, right? Christine Sprankles, who's now coming back to Magic, which I'll have a video on sometime soon, if not before this. It's now safe for her to return to Magic.
now that the big bad Jeremy is gone. I think it is, you know, I'll just be honest. I'm not using all my ammunition because I'm very self. I want to play MTG Arena. I'm going to change, but they blank, better not blanking take my account away. They can take my other account away, which they already know about, but they should not take my alternative account, which I'm dumping money into, away. There's got to be some way I can block the name of that account. Let me know in the comments below, because I would be interested. Can I, like, VPN it or something? I don't know. Anyway, if they take away my account, i.e. ban me, right, for life, like, on Sleeve Media is no longer allowed to play Magic Online or MTG Arena or go to a pre-release, or otherwise they'll penalize the store that allowed him to play. If they do that to me, a lot of skeletons are coming out of those closets. All of them. But I realized that like a good necromancer like Liliana, I have to keep, you know, an ace up my sleeve. And my ace up my sleeve is I have screenshots of really uh, magic pros. Some that I haven't mentioned because I can, you know, some that I've not mentioned. I, I've briefly alluded to some of them and the bad things they did. The key here is no one made any money for 20 years. Like Owen, for instance. He's not getting paid for 20 years. He's living in his uh, mother's house. He's living in a, his mother's apartment. He's, I mean, uh, Sam Black, for instance, he lives with seven other dudes in a like, one-bedroom apartment. Magic has not been a profitable venture for the last forever until the Mythic Invitation. And then you have mil millions of dollars being given away and you have guaranteed yearly contracts. If you were Owen and you were given $75,000 extra to do what you are already doing, that changes your life. You can move out of your mom's apartment. You are now respectable and you can find, you know, you can attract females to date because now you have an income. You can buy a car. You can have your own place. Some of the behaviors you may have engaged in the past are not relevant today because now it's life-changing. You guys know I don't believe people can change. I think predators will always be predators. I think people who steal will always steal. Um, when somebody steals from you, if they steal a pencil, they'll steal your iPad, as I found out later. But I do believe one thing that can change people is when they win the lottery or they come into a large amount of money they were not expecting. In this case, it's the Mythic Invitation. I think it's a positive change for the majority of Magic players because instead of scrapping and begging and e-begging for money to fly to events, they have the money. They have $75,000 income, free plane tickets, free meals, free hotel. It's your job now. And it's a beautiful job. I mean, who would not want to, who would not want to, unless you were making a ton of money, right? Which I wouldn't do it because I make more money than, yeah, obviously more money than this by a multiplier. Um, but I would absolutely think about it at least. I would think about, okay, this is a game I love and I would get lots of good PR and it looks like a lot of fun. And even though it pays me 75000 here, I'll be promoted. I can probably make another 25000 from donations. Uh, maybe if I'm wedged, I can make you know 80000 a month from medical bills because I have to be traveling all the place, all the time. My point is very simple. He had a dream for 20 years of being a magic professional. And that was a joke for the last 20 years until this happened. A magic professional would get paid a professional salary, which they gave him. For him to lose all of that based on free, quote, anonymous people and a Kotaku article based on these free anonymous people. Wow. Wow. Like, I am, my MTG Arena account, I am scared. I should not be putting more money into it, but I will because that's how I enjoy. I I really do enjoy MTG Arena, 
And what's scary is, even if I change my behavior today, and I'm like a model citizen for magic, and I never say a bad thing about magic, it's not what I say today or tomorrow that matters, it's what I said in the past. And I've said some pretty bad stuff about Wizard of the Coast, about its uh, magic pros, which it's not lies, I didn't lie about anything, but I'm sure they don't want Alex in the news all the time. I'm sure they don't want one of the most viewed magic videos to be Alex cheating multiple times and not being banned for life as of that video. It's sad. Uh, one of the saddest parts of this is it tells you who your friends really are. When you are at your lowest, the people who stick with you, the people who defend you, even one of my favorite songs is um, one of the lyrics, and I will always remember this in middle school. I didn't have many friends, but the friends I do have, they're friends for life. Is, will you take my side even if you know I'm wrong? That's really tough to do. That's a tough question. And I guess the answer for Reed and Huey is no. And they don't even know if Owen's wrong. That's the saddest part about this is they're not one of them. There's a bunch of them. And to be quite honest, I would not be surprised if more news came out about other magic pros who are white males. They've been behaving very differently over the past 20 years than they are today. Let's see what happens because there will be lots of lots of drama. This I promise you.